even though I'm only fishing a tiny way out, I'm still clipping up to the best drop I can find. There's a lot of weed that's floating around in here. I've been baiting it. It definitely got firmer for a bit. They've definitely been in here feeding. But as you saw from that first cast, there was a lot, and there still is now, look. There's still this really, I don't even know what weed it is. It's really fine. It doesn't smell bad. I'm sure it's fresh, so I'm sure the carp are getting in and amongst it. But even though it's a solid bag going down here, you still want it in the cleanest bit that you can find. Well, I do. Others may disagree. Oh, see that? Totally different. And look, just a tiny little strand. So, that drop was outrageous. So it's in the clip. Just try and line it up with something on the far bank. Not quite there. We're talking, you've probably heard the saying, spots within spots. Well, I'm sure the carp will have fed all over it, but I want to do everything in my power to make it as easy for that carp to find my hook bait as possible. So it's there, so it's to the, it's actually to the, just to the, the wooden part of the swim on the other side. And that is by far and away the firmest area. Just have one more check. Yeah, that is the zone. Lovely. Little solid bag sitting on that. Real simple, solid bag mix. Rig-wise, dead simple. Four and a half inches of supernatural, 18 pound. I've got a crank size for just knotless knotted in the hook bait is a little 12 mil wafter that's infused with the no-name goo but the mix itself is just a variety of pellet i use the mainline spod pellet but i also use some crushed pellet and some i think it's called salmon salmon crumb or salmon fry that hinders do and all those small particles they help to fill every single gap in there and it just means you can get that bag as tight as possible in all honesty that comes into its own when you're casting a long way. And I'm clearly, I mean, I could throw this into position, but like anything, you, you keep tying solid bags as if you were casting a hundred yards every single time and you just get into the right habit of how to tie them. Bit time consuming. I, normally, I do have some ready to go, but they've got barbless hooks where it's for a different water. That is the perfect parcel of attraction. Not much actual food, just a load of crushed pellet and different size pellet. The hook bait is a, is a wafter, so it slowly works its way to the top of the pile, but the hook remains nice and covered. It's real, it, it really is a deadly underused tactic. It's sort of become a bit more fashionable in the last couple of years, by myself included. I'd, I'd ignored it for a long time, but I've got right back into it now and it's, it's almost become my single hook bait approach. I didn't do it this morning with a fish I caught because I wanted to rig out there really quickly. But if, um, when I'm really on my solid bag game, I'd probably have 10 already tied up and you can simply loop it on, chuck it out there. I think it puts a lot of people off because when you do it like this, if you're then casting it a long way, or you're trying to put it up against an island and you get it wrong, it becomes too easy to sort of say, oh, that'll do, which you probably wouldn't do if it was a choddy or a spinner rig. You'd keep going until you got it nailed on. But the beauty, when you've got a load tied up, you soon get into the rhythm. And if you do get it wrong, you can loop another one on instantly. Not so bad here, because I'm literally lowering it two rod lengths out, so. But, whether two rod lengths out or 100 yards plus, this bag that I've just tied will do it. A good habit to get into. And the final touch before it goes out, because I'm going to put a little bit of bait over the top, I still want this little parcel to be the most attractive thing down there. So a little splurge of goo in there. And whilst I don't want to eat it because it smells horrendous, thankfully the carp think differently. Now, because I'm still fishing in quite deep water, I just want to put something down on the bed that's going to leak off a bit more attraction. And this 
smart liquid from mainline. It's a real, it's a real fatty liquid, but you see it working up and down the water column. Carp are passing. I'm just hoping that that, with the pulling power of not only the boilies but the pellet as well, it will just really bring them down. And once they're down, there's my little uh, solid bagged prime ready for attack. Let's do this. little flick to the spot in line with that swim and even through this solid bag of pellet we'll still feel that drop oh yes oh yes indeed I'm not sure if you can see them but when the bag actually splits on the bottom you get a load of bubbles come up um, and I'm trying to set a little James's size trap, so accuracy is everything. So now I know exactly where my bag's landed, even allowing for that little bit of swing back, and I know where I've got to flick a few bits and pieces to, to bait up accordingly. Right, I'm gonna put two little handfuls of pellet. And even though I've got boilies mixed in, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do boilies and pellet at the same time, because then if I throw, the boilies will ultimately go further. So now I'm gonna pick out 11 of my favorite boilies. Sounds really sad, I know, but as you can tell, the fact I've had a lucky monkey for 13 years, I'm a little bit sus um, superstitious. Nine, 10, 11. Just a few little bits, all in the zone. And now, last one, we've now got a few little bits in the zone, and we have got a meal and a trap set for King James. Most importantly, this is the rod that Monkey has chosen. Sitting there, double tap, we're angling. 